If you're like me, you have probably grown up with 22 long rifles. But when you think about it, there's so many different options out there. I mean, even this is considered a rifle, right? And they're so fun. You learn so much. But what are the top? What are the best rifles chambered in 22 long rifle? Let's find out. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here to talk about 22 lr I think most of us have pretty much grown up with 22 long rifle. I look at it as kind of the, um, well I guess airsoft more so, but this is a good start. This is a good little uh, gateway drug into the addictions of firearms that at least I have now, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I mean, if you're gonna be addicted to something, it lets you to be, you know, constitutionally protected. For now, make sure you're supporting organizations like Gun Owners of America. But anyway, it's not so much the cartridge that we're talking about today, it's all about the rifles that shoot it. And I'm gonna give you my pick for the top five 22 long rifle rifles. So without further ado, let's roll into it. Previously known as the CZ455, we've got now the CZ457. The CZ457 is a bolt action rifle, and I figured if we we're gonna have a bulk gun up here, Let's have a pretty nice one. And if you've ever had the opportunity to shoot one of CZ's rifles, or at least a bolt gun chambered in 22, you'll know exactly why I want it up here, especially the Pro Varmint Suppressor Ready one. Why? Because it's suppressor ready. What makes it suppressor ready? It has a threaded barrel. I don't know why they just couldn't say threaded barrel. You can kind of interpret what that means. You can throw on whatever mu muzzle device you want, as long as it's the correct thread pitch, or a silencer. And if you haven't shot 22 suppressed, it's a lot of fun. And that's all there is to it. And like I said, it's formerly known as the 455. They've recently updated to the 457 that CZ has to offer. And they have a whole slew of configurations and different SKUs available for this bolt gun. And yeah, the model that I've got up here right now, the uh, Pro Varmint, that one has a five round capacity. So five rounds suppressed, nice little quiet guy. And of course, if you're looking to shoot some small game, well, I should say hunt some small game, something like this would be a pretty cool thing. I mean, it's called the Pro Varmint, so makes sense. Anyway, let's move on to my number four pick. Number four is a rifle I grew up with and absolutely love, the Henry AR-7. This gun is iconic because, well, it's in a couple of James Bond movies. I remember it from Goldfinger, uh, where she's up on the hill, she takes out a guy. But of course, the iconic scene when Sean Connery in uh, From Russia With Love takes out the helicopter, well, what should be the pilot because he's sitting in the right seat, but it's not. Uh, but anyway, takes out the guy who's about to drop a grenade on him and it blows up in the cockpit and it comes down. And then all of a sudden you see James Bond run away from the scene, but you also see James Bond at the same time coming towards you. There's a little editing this half there. But anyway, the Henry AR-7 is a really cool rifle. First of all, you can fit pretty much the entire gun in the stock, which is pretty neat. And Henry marks it, marks it, markets it, if I could speak, markets it today as more of a survival rifle that floats even. The model today now does actually float. The one I grew up with had a fiberglass stock, and um, I don't think it would actually float. Uh, maybe it did, I don't know, I never tried it. But anyway, really cool gun. Like I said, breaks down completely, semi-auto, and it just all fits into the stock. So it's a nice compact thing that you can throw in a backpack for, again, survival, whatever else it might be. So anyway, my number four pick, the Henry AR-7, the one that James Bond likes to use. If James Bond's gonna use a 22, I guess this is gonna be it. And let's move on to my third pick. My third pick is the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. If you're looking to get some training in and you're pretty much learn your manual of arms, familiarize yourself with your AR-15, uh, but don't wanna spend two, two, three money, uh, well, get yourself a thousand rounds of 22, which is still gonna cost you I miss the days of like 2008, 2009. But anyway, uh, it's still gonna cost you not as much as 223556, but the MMP 1522 still has the same functionality, same controls as the regular 556 AR. So pretty cool. So I really like that Smith & Wesson came out with this because it's something that it's reliable and it works really, really well. And it doesn't feel as cheap as a bunch of other like 22 takes do on other guns that are out there. Another one that I do like a lot uh, is the HK416-22. Uh, it's 
partnered with Umarex, HK did, and they pretty much made a the same gun as the Smith & Wesson MP1522, except it looks like a 416. So that's cool. And of course, we've seen that with a couple of other guns out there, like the GSG22 that looks like an MP5, which they've had to revise a couple of times because, you know, patents and things like that. Uh, but other than that, there's some pretty fun takes, again, of different guns that are you know, they're real life caliber. There's a lot of them out there for pistols and things like that, but we're not talking about pistols today. So it's pretty cool to see that. Again, the training that you can do with an MP1522 to familiarize yourself with your standard AR-15 or whatever other type of AR that you might be running that's similar, whether it be 5.56 or a different caliber, it's fun. It's just simply fun, which is why I'm such a huge fan of the 22 LR cartridge. So with that being said, let's move on to my number two pick. My next pick is the rifle I learned all the fundamentals on. I grew up with this gun and it is one that is has more sentimental value than it will ever have in financial value. That is for sure, because I have absolutely run the crap out of it. And that is the Henry 22. Just the basic Henry lever action 22, no frills, nothing fancy. That's all it is. And I grew up with one of these, just absolutely falling in love with it and ultimately falling in love with firearms as well. Got to the point where I could run that thing as pretty much as fast as I could pull the trigger on some semi-autos when I was eight years old. Uh, but at the end of it all, this is the gun that I learned how to line my sights up with. This is the gun that I learned how to slow my breathing down, how to you know take those shots and everything. No, I wasn't shooting out to 750 yards of some soda cans or anything like that. I don't have that skill, unlike some of us out there. Actually, none of us have that skill, as we so found out. But uh, anyway, what I can say is though, within about 50 feet, I was on target, all right? And that thing was a lot of freaking fun. And it is something that I totally recommend. It just has that cool feature of the lever action too. And that functionality is just a lot of fun. And it looks cool. Again, just absolutely neat. Now, another gun that I'm just kind of going to throw into the mix here, because it's similar, but not really, that I also grew up with and still have in my collection is the Henry pump action. You don't see too many of those out there chambered in 22, but yeah, it's a pump action rifle chambered in 22 that I can actually run a lot faster than I can the lever action. Uh, mine is very old, however, and I think I'm missing a part that keeps the pump kind of held in place like a screw or something, but it's okay, it still works, and that's all that matters. Anyway, before we move on to our number one pick, uh, there's a honorable mention or two that I would like to talk about, one of which is a, another one that I grew up with, and the reason I don't have it on the list is because it's not just 22, it's also 410. And I'm talking about the Springfield M6 rifle. This is a very cool gun that was issued to the United States Air Force pilots as a survival rifle for hunting small game, moderate game, if need be with the 410 under barrel 22 on top. You actually had rounds that were held within the stock itself. It has this little lever of a cover that opens up and then you have a couple rounds in there. I think like maybe 10, or so 22 rounds and then you would have like, I don't know, a couple rounds of 410 that you could throw in and you would be able to just rock and roll with that. If you needed a, you know, again, hunt some small game to survive, hence the term survival rifle, you had that there. The sling could be like a paracord sling that you could have, you know, paracord for to tie up something or whatever else. Just overall, a really neat rifle. So now let's go ahead and roll into our number one pick. Number one, the Ruger 1022. There's nothing fancy about this specific rifle. This isn't the takedown model. Doesn't even have iron sights, uh, but we do just have a basic little SIG red dot and it has a, um, uh, a upgraded trigger in it, all right? Which is a lot of fun. This gun just is amazing. I mean, it's one that has been around for so long. I think a lot of us probably grew up with a 1022 or one of the Henry lever actions that I was talking about. And we learned so much about trigger discipline and you know feeling the reset and all that type of stuff, learning how to change mags and everything else, running the bolt, all that type of fun stuff on this type of firearm. They're just fun, they're reliable, they're great for teaching, they're great for hunting small game again. They're just overall a fantastic rifle and if you're looking to get you know your kids into shooting or you're wanting to teach some this is the gun that a lot of people go to this is the one that people are kind of like hey 
You know, if you want to learn, you want to practice, get yourself a 1022. You want something you can take out in the woods for like a survival rifle or just to have something on you, get yourself the takedown 1022 that they released not, you know, a couple years ago. Okay, it's actually been quite a few years. They released the takedown quite a few years ago. But at the end of it all, this is the gun in my mind that kind of set the pace for, well, lever actions are fun and everything, but I really want to get out there and shoot some semi-auto. This would be the gun that I would pick up and go shoot on days that, you know, my father wasn't there to show me the M1 carbine or something like that, because that's the one that I would really want to go shoot. But yeah, this is what I grew up with, along with quite a few of the other guns mentioned, but this is, you know, why it's on my top five. Also, this has been around for so long that there's a lot of aftermarket support. There's a lot of customization modularity. If you wanted to, you could turn this thing into a bullpup. Uh, again, there's a lot of aftermarket support and so much so that there's even the 1122, our buddy 22 Plinkster did a video on this Fletcher Rifle Works uh, 1122, which is pretty interesting. Go take a look at that video by our buddy 22 over there, Dave, and uh, let us know what you think about that. In fact, we probably should have called him up and had him in on this video. And now that I'm thinking about this. That, that, we, we, that was a missed opportunity. Um, anyway, Dave, if you're watching this, I think you and I should probably have like your top five and then you and I can battle out about whose top five is better. Let us know down in the comment sections if you'd like to see that and we will leave it off there. Let me know too, what were your favorite rifles growing up? Were they chambered in 22? Were they not? And what are some of your favorite 22 rifles that you like to shoot today? And we will leave it off there, guys. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And I'll see you down in the comment section below.